So I'm excited to um, introduce our next speaker who this year is joining us virtually. She is in Salt Lake City at a conference but did not want to miss out on this opportunity to share some of her knowledge with you guys. So um, we have Elizabeth Benz who's with us uh, to talk about uh, making computer mediated communication a catalyst of engagement. So for the audience, it's important for you guys to know Elizabeth is going to be able to speak to us, but she cannot hear us. So we will be doing a Q&A session at the end using voice to text as you ask her questions and she will respond that way. So please bear with us through the technology um, as we kick this off um, and welcome Elizabeth live from Salt Lake. Good morning and hello from the 104th annual National Communication Association Convention in Salt Lake City. My name is Elizabeth Benz and I'm the Director of Student Support at CGPS. Before we get started, I'd like to just share that this is a live broadcast. So those things that can happen during live broadcasts, so if they happen, I do apologize in advance. Um, and first, a very special thank you to Megan Saul for all of her hard work and technical assistance with this presentation. So we're going to talk about making computer mediated communication a catalyst for engagement. Computer mediated communication is the foundation of online education. While we know how to use the software and the tools, do we really know what effective computer mediated communication really is? And do we understand the why? Understanding the why will help us make computer mediated communication a catalyst for engagement. For today's discussion, I'll be referring to computer mediated communication simply as CMC for convenience. For online students to have a rich learning experience, it is important for all online education stakeholders to understand the how and the why of this kind of communication. Effective CMC leads to social presence, trust, collaboration, and engagement. Furthermore, understanding this communication method can give online graduates and online higher education professionals a workplace advantage. As you can see, and as you already know, discussion on classroom technology is nothing new. Unfortunately, these discussions typically center on the latest, shiniest platform and not necessarily the human behavior associated with it. So why is this important here? Well, CMC is central to online learning. We build identities and social presence in online spaces and we prepare students for increasingly CMC work-based environments. And CMC is not neutral. So to quote CMC scholar Wally Oni of the Osan State University in Nigeria, CMC of course is not just a tool, it is at once a technology, a medium, and an engine of social relations. It not only structures social relations, it is a space in which these relations occur and the tool that those individuals use to enter that space. So CMC is an umbrella term for all kinds of interpersonal communication. It is different from other mediated communications because of the human to human interaction it is interactive. One is both a sender and a receiver acting simultaneously as a source and an interpreter. Because the interaction is personal, the message can consist of anything that two people would want to discuss. As a result of this interactivity, feedback naturally occurs, sometimes through real-time messages, such as text messaging, and other times through asynchronous patterns, such as discussion boards. We really must examine both the intended message meaning and the emotion of the writer, the sender, and the perceived message interpretation and the emotion of the receiver, the reader, to determine if the communication is successful. It is that intention and interpretation that removes the neutrality from CMC. CMC research really started in the 1970s and really took off in the 1990s. Basic CMC is achieved through text-based exchange. You can think of email and discussion boards as the foundation of CMC. Here are just a few pros and cons associated with it. It eliminates time and geography. 
It lowers communication stress. It can remove abil ability boundaries. It can allow personal censorship and editing. And in regards to personal censor censorship, asynchronous CMC allows us to craft our identity the way we want. For an example, think about the last time you had to introduce yourself in writing in an online class or some other online forum. Just think about how long did that take you? How long did you really spend putting that together? For many students, it's a very big challenge. Another pro is uh, it allows more writing practice and skill building. But there are some cons. Obviously, it lacks the nonverbal cues and, the, and it lowers face-to-face -face skill development. It requires technology access. Just today, I'm using headphones, a computer, an iPhone. And on your end, we have the receiving computer, receiving iPhone, and the screen and the audio. It has detachment and it's time consuming. The lack of verbal cues is something we're really gonna focus on today because that makes messaging more likely to be misinterpreted. However, the lack of these verbal cues, uh, nonverbal cues, excuse me, typically lead to higher levels of equal authority, status, and turn taking. It reduces barriers such as gender roles, shyness, appearance, and it typically leads to higher levels of idea expression. CMC is a massive discipline in the field of communication. And what we're going to be talking about today is simply just a sample, just an, a very basic introduction. There's four theories I'd kind of like to introduce you to this morning. The first one is uh, information and media richness. And this is about using higher levels of technology integration to receive more information. You can think of video or streaming like we're doing right now, because you can see my verbal, my nonverbal cues because I'm nodding or smiling. And when I get questions, I might be think, thinking quiz, quizzically. Um, social information processing. This is really the cornerstone of CMC theory. And it was developed in 1992 and scholar Joseph Walther suggested that one-way users, like email or discussion forums, um, can overcome the limitations of CMC relative to face-to-face -face encounters um, by translating the nonverbal cues into verbal cues. More questions and disclosures are used, language is varied, and symbols can come into play. You might think of emojis. Lately, GIFs have come into the picture. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Um, and GIFs have an interesting nuance of being able to convey emotion from popular culture. The social information processing theory also suggests a four to one ratio, meaning that there need to be four CMC interactions to equal a face-to-face -face interaction regarding getting the information you need to communicate. This means that the exchange to equal face-to-face -face communication and the face-to-face -face relationship is going to take longer. The hyperpersonal model suggests that when communicators are strangers, readers are going to pull from their personal repertoire in order to interpret a message. In other words, the receivers are interpreting messages from an egocentric or stereotypical viewpoint. They are drawing upon experiences and knowledge of their world such relational differences can lead to false interpretations. Then we have channel expansion theory. And this suggests that the effectiveness of a communication depends on the level of experience with the person and whom one is communicating with. So in short, the more experience, the more effective. This might contribute to the phenomenon of students seeking the same instructor for multiple courses in a given program. So CMC leads to several things, and this is where it really comes into play for us as higher education, higher online education professionals. First, we're gonna see improved grammar and writing because when students are not graded, they real, even when students are not graded, they're gonna write better because that is their only way to convey their competency. They don't get to convey that competency in any other way, like nodding their head or, um, is simply that acknowledgement to the instructor. 
You're also going to see more interactions than perhaps you would in a, a traditional classroom. They're trying to develop presence. And because of that presence, the students are going to expect the same of the instructor. And we need to be mindful of person-centeredness. The lack of nonverbal cues requires extra care when addressing an individual in order to build a personal connection and to manage and reduce that uncertainty. I think we can all relate to writing that email and thinking, is this going to be interpreted the correct way? In a study by the National University of Malaysia, students reported that CMC was an ideal platform for generating new ideas. It was because of the time the students had with the message. They were able to read and comprehend the critique and the comments of their classmates. And then they were able to generate, expand, and complement their scope of ideas. They identified more criteria and studied each more deeply. In short, they were able to widen the range of their thinking, and it also allowed them to build stronger counter-arguments when needed. A few more things to expect. Compu communicator motivation. Because a CMC message takes longer to create, it takes more motivation to do it. Um, it's a more deliberate effort, if you will. And because of that more deliberate effort, due attention really should be given to it when received. Communication ability depends on one's capacity to, to code messages. We all know that. And in, as I've mentioned already, the traditional face-to-face -face communication um, provides nonverbal cues. And when we don't have the ability to rely on those cues, we'll expand on the, me the, the sender will actually expand on their own message to build the context. So you'll see message elaboration. This can also happen not only in CMC, but also in traditional written correspondence. You may think of a correspondence letter trying to set the tone or the context of the message. A study from the University of Arizona tells us that a reduction in these nonverbal cues actually increases the attention resources for message processing. So for example, we'll pay attention to the words, not just the tears. In short, we don't have those tears to distract us, if that makes sense. In that study, the researcher stipulated that this might be particularly critical during a supportive interaction when recipients face significant challenges in maintaining self-presentation. The reallocation of attention resources in CMC has been linked with increased self-reflection. When discussing a stressor, the potential for increased self-focused attention may encourage recipients to engage more in their thoughts and feelings. And finally, um, like we experience in face-to-face -face interactions, bias and stereotypes can come into play. Something as simple as a last name can trigger these things. Anything that can impact the ethnic, cultural background of a person needs to be, we need to be careful of that. Um, these stereotypes can be extremely detrimental in education and how we communicate with our students. So as you are receiving these messages, just be mindful of every little cue. It could be anything from like a last name, which is an easiest and obvious example, to perhaps even a word that has been chosen that's buried deep into a communication message. We can also expect in CMC to have an unwarranted interpretation of confidence. So in short, what this means is that email writers are more confident that readers will correctly interpret their sarcasm, their seriousness, their anger, and even their sadness. They make assumptions that others can hear the tone. However, readers are forced to impose their own richness. And as we learned in the hyperpersonal model, they pull from an egocentric perspective. Therefore, interpretation accuracy of messages is low. The research has shown this time and time again. Of particular interest is some new research is actually showing that familiarity between communicators, even a face-to-face -face familiarity, is making no difference in message interpretation. 
So we need to be very careful. And this is what, again, makes CMC a non-neutral communication. Additionally, if an emoji is used or even a, a, a GIF, special attention should really be paid to it. It is a deliberate attempt on the part of the messenger to steer the conversation in a certain direction. So what does this mean for all of us uh, in online education? We really need to increase um, our presence cues through increased message, exchange, message exchanges. Um, it's really important to build relationships with the students. And as the social information processing theory shows, it takes longer and it takes more interactions. Social information processing in communication disciplines um, is referred to as SIP, S-I-P. And that's because it takes many SIPs to be fulfilled. Um, so you can think of a face-to-face -face interaction as a gulp and CMC as a SIP. So we need to make sure we're doing lots of SIPs in our CMC communication. We need to make sure that our messages are more timely because that's gonna reduce the, the uncertainty and the anxiety of our partner, our interactant in communication. We need to really work on using rich media. Um, and this really goes toward the interpretation of messages and are we interpreting them correctly? Or are we imposing our own egocentric perspective? If we have the opportunity to use video or streaming or audio, that's really important. Finally, and most importantly, we really need to be mindfulness um, of our mindful, excuse me, um, of our communications. We need to be mindful of our own cues, every last word that we use, and we need to make sure that we're helping our receivers interpret the messages we are sending. As I mentioned, this was a really brief introduction to CMC, and it's one of the largest disciplines in communication. A lot of the current discussion talks about what is a computer, um, what is a computer? A lot of children's toys now have uh, artificial intelligence. Um, this artificial intelligence is now um, actually becoming a communicator, so the sender or receiver might actually be a, uh, a computer. So we're going to take some questions, um, but before we do, please know that Megan Saul is going to use the talk to text feature when she asks questions. So um, it's going to take just a second to relay those questions. And um, please wait for Megan Saul to get to the microphone before you ask so that her iPhone can capture your question. I hope this introduction to CMC helps you be a better communicator. Um, only when we have true and effective communicators can we reduce barriers and contribute and contribute to learning. Making our presence of either as a instructor or a student support specialist we must be mindful. So using these little just using these little bits of information, I hope that you can make your CMC a catalyst for student engagement. Thank you, and I'm opening the floor to questions. Hi, Elizabeth. It's Richard. I have a question about differences between generations that are digital natives. And again, Megan Saul has the iPhone to capture questions. And generations that were pre-digital. Do we see a difference in those generations' ability to communicate effectively with CMC? So we have a question about differences between generations that are digital natives and generations that are pre-digital. And do we see a difference in generations' ability to communicate effectively with CMC? It's really interesting. Um, that motivation piece really comes into play there. Um, a lot of the research is beginning to show that age might not necessarily have anything to do with it. It really comes down to the motivation of the uh, communicator. Um, Obviously, understanding some CMC theory, understanding how to use the tools can help individuals be more effective at it. Um, 
but it comes down um, basically to that motivation. Thank you, that was a great question. All right, so I understand there are no other questions. Again, thank you. Um, this has been very exciting to deliver a presentation to the CGPS Symposium live from Salt Lake City. Um, I appreciate everyone for um, participating, and I hope that you all have a great rest of the day. And um, I guess I can say it's time for lunch. <laughs> oh, we have one more question. I see one, one more question coming up. Hold on. <laughs> um, so all right, Olga has a question. So my question is, please let me know if I um, understood this correctly, that basically the first choice is to use uh, media-rich re interactions, and then the second one would be text. Is this, um, am I seeing um, this correctly? And So Olga says, please let me know if I understood this correctly, that basically the first choice of, is to use media interactions, and then the second one would be text. Well, yes and no. Um, it depends upon how much information you want to convey and how fast. Um, the richer the media that is used, the more information that's going to be conveyed. Um, the text-based communication is going to require more time and typically shorter messages, um, again, just sort of uh, it's like we have just learned in text messaging and that back to back. Um, what's interesting though, is the richer media typically does not allow for that self censorship that the text messaging does. So in terms of working with students, that's one really good thing about the discussion boards because it again, it allows students to really think about censor edit themselves before they go public with it. Um, that is a stark difference than the, to the face-to-face -face classroom where students are having to react in, um, instantly. And sometimes that's how we end up with students who, if you will, regret what they say in class. We see less of that in CMC because of they have the option to think before they hit that send button. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that a lot of the CMC research currently is really focusing on social media networks um, and how that one-to-many and many-to-many -many communication is working. Um, the, the, it's interesting to observe that um, this particular area of online education, um, the CMC and online um, like discussion forums, isn't as prevalent. And um, I think that's a space that we can all look to um, to learn some more. So I think that's the last question. And uh, again, I appreciate you attending. And I hope that this, uh, I hope the streaming worked on your end as well as it did on my end. All right, thank you. And I am now gonna close out the presentation. Thank you and have a great day. <laughs>